time for the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show brings you famous celebrities and amazing people from all over the world. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and Apple. Also featured on Stitch, Stitcher, Overcast, Shopbox, and more. More platforms coming near you as well, too. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. We're here with two wonderful gentlemen just getting together for a special evening. We got a hip hop violinist and a um and a, and a well known producer just coming together for a very special program. This gentleman is a pop jazz hip hop virtuoso violinist, and he started off as classical and uh, made the transition to hip hop. He'll talk about that, and we'll play um a couple of tunes as well too. His um. He's also ranked in tunes and number one local and regional, number eight nationally, number nine globally with his debut CV, won numerous awards, traveled and lectured around the world about um, the classical violin, hip hop, and many more. And also his producer, who he's uh, paired up with for quite some time, just well known as well, too. We'll talk about his work and um, live from beautiful Florida. And if I got this right, I hope you guys were on conference call and sharing this wonderful moment together in a groundbreaking interview, just being unique. And ladies and gentlemen, live in conference. Yes, that's what we call it. Gareth Johnson and Juan Blair. Gareth, Juan, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> hey, that's great. Hey, that's great. Great to have you guys with. And um, Gareth, you're a pop jazz, hip hop, virtuoso violinist, and your debut CB, CD hit uh, number one locally and regional, number eight nationally, and number nine globally, which is very impressive. You've won numerous awards, traveled and lectured around the world. And uh, Juan, you're also um, a producer extraordinaire, and uh, we'll talk about that. But first, um, guys, just uh, tell us how you got started in your careers and uh, how you both came together. Um, Juan, I'll start. Yeah, yeah. Go here speaking, everyone. And um, as you said, Mike, uh, I started as a classical violinist. I started at 10 years old, uh, which is actually late starter for a violinist. But it was always my passion, so I knew it was what I was supposed to do, so I dedicated my life to it anyways. And by... 15, I was winning international violin competitions in classical music still. Uh, But by around 18 or 19 years old, I started creating my own music, which was more in like new age genre uh, slash classical, but doing my own thing. I knew I could create from the time I was young. Mm -hmm. However, after I graduated from college, you know, we all had to get serious. We had to get jobs. We had to get paid and make a living. But... I just stopped doing all of my creative work for years and years. I taught at a university in Georgia called Albany State University. Um, I was all over the place, winning other competitions, playing concerts, teaching whenever I was back down in South Florida, which is kind of my home base. And from there, I met uh, one of our producers, Dwayne Taylor, my manager. And Dwayne Taylor... He heard me teaching some kids in the Center for Creative Education here in West Palm Beach, and he heard me teaching them Bruno Mars. Wow. So he stopped me, and he was like, hold up. I haven't heard a brother play Bruno Mars on the violin like that. (laughs) (laughs) So I didn't really think of it as a big deal because I play Paganini, Brahms, Tchaikovsky, anything on the violin. I don't care. 
I played Bruno Mars, of course, Michael Jackson. I had just been studying Ed Sheeran um, and other some of the great other pop artists of today. And so he came to me and he was like, hey, let's do a CD. And at the time, I didn't really know what I was going to do. I was I had writer's block like you wouldn't believe at that time in my life after not creating for so long. I think if you stop doing it, it can kind of dry up on you. But then one day, it was about a year and a couple of months ago, Dwayne sent me some of Juan's beats. And as soon as I heard, I had writer's block for a year straight, but as soon as the day that I heard Juan's beats, I heard this beat called Call Her Name, which is number three on our, our CD called Evolution. I started writing. I had a song written out in less than a couple hours. Wow. Uh, yeah, and I uh, literally like six-minute song. And from there, we created another track, another track. Then Dwayne flew me out to California to the Bay Area where Juan produces. We put together a whole CD in just, I think, seven days in the studio, I think it was. Uh, we yeah. did a whole CD and... We just, we vibed together. We'd stay up all night creating the tracks, no sleep. And we didn't sleep. We knew what we were doing <laughs> was was too big and too important. And it was a great thing that we were doing. So that's when people get too excited to sleep, really. So we kind of entered into the mode. And you know you're creating greatness whenever nobody wants to even sleep. We're just all too excited about what we were putting together at the time. So we just went yeah. with it, and I mean, if you listen to the tracks, I don't think anybody else would have slept either when creating something <laughs> like that. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing. I listen to your tracks, and I'll tell you one thing. I'm having a hard time sleeping after listening to it. And when I complained about it for a few days, I'm like, "How come I'm not sleeping?" And I listen. I'm like. I should not be listening to this before going to sleep. It's got to be I'm <laughs> wide awake. So uh, a lesson here, folks, it's like if something is too exciting to listen, don't do it before bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right on, yeah. And, and, of course, we'll play a couple of tracks as well, too. And um, Juan, also you've been a producer for quite some time with uh, Gareth. Just um, tell us how you got started. Um. Uh, I started around 10 years old as well, like Gareth. Um, but uh, where Gareth is more focused on his violin, I kind of uh, hooked up with my friends in the neighborhood, and we kind of always did band things, you know. I, I, and so I grew up kind of on the funk and uh, Prince and uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire and, and, and a lot of 80s stuff and other stuff. But anyway, um, I've done so many different types of music that I'm pretty – you know, I guess sort of like a chameleon, and I love and respect music of all kinds and stuff. Anyway, a few years ago, I did a project with Dwayne. I met that's when I met Dwayne, um, Dwayne Taylor. So you know, uh, Garrett's manager, uh, my business partner, and uh, we did a project. And we were working with a bunch of singers. We were flying to Vegas, and there's like a big crew of people, singers, engineers, producers, and and within that whole conglomeration of activity. Gareth, kind of, I mean, uh, Dwayne kind of put, noticed me and like, I like that dude, you know, <laughs> he, he kind of <laughs> called me out, out of everybody. And so anyway, about a year or two after that, he called me up and said, Juan, I got a violinist. I'm going to send you some music. Send me some beats. And so I was sent him some stuff but that actually never went through. And I didn't know what happened with the whole violin situation, but a year later he called me again and said, Juan, I got a violinist. Send me some beats. So this has kind of been simmering for a year prior, and so anyway, I sent him some music. That's when Gareth got the track. And then, in the meantime, I looked Gareth up, you know, um, and I mean, we'll kind of call him a pop violin, I mean, a, a hip-hop violinist, but he's more like a, I mean, he's I started studying him on, found him online and did some, uh, my own research. Like, whoa, this guy, not just from the hip hop violinist. I mean, you know, not just as a hip hop violinist, but he's, he's more than that. This guy is incredible, you know? And I'm like, this the guy who I'm sending beats to? Yeah, man, we're going to make this happen. And 
And he's like, I, but other people want to send music. I said, no, I got a guy. Ugly fingers. So anyway, that's how I sent him Gareth the music. And then we started vibing over the phone and, you know, we talked and, you know, we got along right away. You know, he, he, he ran some ideas. I loved his, his ideas right off the bat. Like, man, that was, I couldn't have wrote that, you know, did better myself. <laughs> but, you know, he flies out with me in the Bay Area. And, um, and like you said, we sat in the studio for our first session was like four days, I think, day mm-hmm. and night. Yeah. Um, we pumped out like half the album. And then he flew back up on a different uh, weekend about a month later. And we, we did another four day straight or so. And, and that was the album, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Our, I had, to add, I had to add a little something. I'm sorry, Juan. Um, yeah, go ahead. Because I heard the beats and I was blown away. As I said, I wrote, wrote songs to them immediately. Uh, but then actually getting out there to work with Juan, it took me to a whole nother level as a musician. I've worked with a lot of the greatest classical musicians on, on the planet, like Itzhak Perlman, Joshua Bell. I've played violin right next to these guys. Pinkus Zuckerman, if you look up any of these names, they're the top violinists throughout history. And... Mm-hmm. And alive today. I work with them. I've worked with them. Played in Napa Valley. Played in Detroit. All over the world with them. And but Juan was what like top three musicians I've ever worked with. Wow! So it immediately <laughs> just took me to a whole nother level. I wasn't even expecting that. I wasn't expecting it, but it took me to a whole different That's level. Different. And just seeing that whole different perspective, as he said, he was trained. He was brought up more like in, in the band and with funk and, and jazz and different rhythms, just so much different that the collaboration came together like magic. It, it, it sounds amazing, too. And also I read as well, too, that um, you first got exposed to classical music by watching um, It's Ak Perlman on TV. Or was it uh, you went to a was concert? That, it's Ak, it's yeah, Ak I Perlman. Went to see him. Yeah, I saw him play. I was at the... Uh, at the class for gifted kids. I had just gotten put put in the, the, the class for gifted kids. They called it Quest. Mm-hmm. All the other kids went to the zoo. And <laughs> we, went to, <laughs> we went to see the St. Louis Symphony, and Itzhak Perlman was there. So I was blessed. It was just, just so happened. I, I had just gotten into that class, and that just blew me away. I was like, I can do that. I know I can do that. And five years mm-hmm. later, I had... Uh, private lessons with Itzhak Perlman, and about 10 years after that, I was playing concerts on the same stage. Wow, that is something, Mm -hmm. and it's all based on a trip to St. Louis, and of course, if you went with a zoo, it could have been a different story. So, (laughs) (laughs) Other animals, you're right, a different animal. (laughs) You hit on the head. (laughs) Boy, we're on the same vibe today. This is good. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and besides the um, the violinists you had mentioned as well, too, Gareth, who are some of your favorite other favorite artists and singers that you um, grew up listening to and who are influenced? And Juan, you can also jump in as well, too. Don't be afraid. Oh, man. Uh-huh. I love everything. I listened to a lot of hip-hop growing up. Jay-Z, Eminem, um, any of those big rappers, Biggie Smalls. I love Tupac back in the day. Uh, mm-hmm. I love a lot of West Coast stuff. Um, Juan, go ahead, man. Yeah, yeah I mean, for me, uh, you know, wide variety. Um, I, I probably, I grew up with my dad, always played the oldies, you know, oldies, like 50s music and stuff. Uh, but, I, you know, I love the music from the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, you know, Earth, Wind & Fire is one of my ultimate groups of all time. You know, uh, Tanyo, Parliament, Funkadelic, you know. Duran Duran, uh, I don't know. Those are the old school groups. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, like rock, hip hop. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite producers, of course, is Quincy Jones, Dr. Dre. I love oh. Kanye West production. Um, Michael you know, Jackson and the- Prince, though, have the biggest influence on me of any two musicians. Yeah. Michael Jackson and Prince, more than any violinist or anybody. Hmm. Uh, 
yeah, as far as absolutely. being entertainers and how they took a stage and just took the crowd that that's what I strive for. <laughs> yep. That is amazing too. And of course, um, if you were to play violin, you know, next to Tupac or Prince or any of those guys mentioned, what what would they have been thinking at the time too? It's like, would they have accepted it or were they looking like what? <laughs> These guys would have all accepted it. These guys were yeah. on a whole different level. They're there. They're the, right where we are. Um they would have had a great time, I think, working with me and Juan in any projects and will, they will have a great time because some of them are still around and I think that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and it looks like you're doing a groundbreaking thing as well, too. We'll talk about your new releases and some of the awards you guys had um, won as well, too, especially some of the, spot, the spots you've or stops you've um, toured around the world. Classical, you listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all he needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today. 1-800-303-3960 that's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com mention the Mike Wagner show get 10% off your first order Sonic Web Studios take your image to the next level also the Mike Wagner show can be heard on mikewagnershow.com you can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner show you can download and listen on Facebook SoundCloud Spreaker Spotify and iHeartRadio also on Anchor FM Radio Public iTunes Google Play and Apple also on Stitcher over for Cast and more, you can listen to the Mike Wagner Show on any mobile device and take it with you. Also, subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. We're here with the duo of pop, ja pop jazz, hip hop, violins, virtuoso Gareth Johnson and producing partner Juan Blair tonight here on the Mike Wagner Show. Just gathering by conference call, it's greatly appreciated. Um, we talked about um, the debut CB. Being um, number one local and regional, number eight nationally, number nine globally, just making a huge impact. Also, um, talking about the great violinist, um, being influenced, and um, also there's one question before I um, you know, get to the uh, some of the music as well too. I forgot to ask and maybe clarify what brought the change uh, from classical to hip hop, Gareth. Well, it, it it never was really a change for me. I still do classical. I still go and play Mozart concertos. I'm playing Mendelssohn Concerto at Broward Center on January 7th with Symphony of the Americas. So I didn't ever change, but I'm just one of those artists that kind of does it all, you mm. know, and, and nothing was going to stop me from eventually kind of creating my own thing and, and venturing off and, and working with other musicians. And I'm a, I'm a person that just likes to constantly go outside of my comfort zone even if I'm scared, and I was scared to go work with Juan, I'm still I'm still scared to work with Juan. I always feel <laughs> but, 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 but you're not scared of talking together right now, though he's with you. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, after we come up, well, the, the way that Juan works with me is magical. He basically lets me know, like, if something's not going to work, he'll be like, no, 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 let's not do that, but I like that, let's do that. Then he'll arrange it all. Then I know what to play, because... He is a master producer, and that's what it takes sometimes. The artist sometimes just lays down a bunch of ideas. Mm -hmm. The producer organize, and mm -hmm. he's he's a master uh, organizer of, of music and, and tracks. He just he knows what he's doing there. So mm -hmm. I'm, get, oh, thank you, thank you, I'm getting more and more comfortable with him, but as I said, he's one of the top musicians I've ever Scene whenever it comes to creating and putting together music that people are really going to enjoy. Mm, that is something as well, oh, too. Good. That is something as well, yeah. too. And of course, uh, we have a couple of singles as well, too. We got um, Rocket Love for you. So uh, let's go ahead and, um, you know, play a little bit of, bit of that, too, and uh, talk about that. So let's um, get on uh, Rocket Love here. So, excellent.
right, that's Rocket Love. That's um, part of the songs as well, too, by Garrett Johnson. And um, just um, tell us a little bit about that one. Where can they uh, find it? Uh, Rocket Love is on all platforms. Okay. Yes. All right. It's on Spotify. By uh, Pandora, Apple Music, iTunes, all platforms. That is fantastic, too. And uh, also, you got a brand new song, Naughty, as well, too. Just uh, tell us all about that one. The Naughty, uh, Dwayne Taylor, again, our manager slash producer uh, with Taylor Productions, he found the beat for this track. And he just has a good ear because Dwayne's also a DJ. Mm-hmm. So he knows what people want to dance to, and that's really important whenever it comes to making music that people are going to have fun with. you got to have dance tracks. And people don't always think of dance when they think of violin. So if you can kind of mix the two together, people really get into that because at the same time as having dance, you have something classy that you're involving. It's not like throw that butt up in the air you know what i mean Mm -hmm. Uh, i don't know what i can say on (laughs) on the radio exactly but (laughs) yeah so it it remains classy by being violin and a dance song so i think naughty can almost be played anywhere and people will have a good time and it's just one of those tracks it's a feel good track it makes you feel good Uh, my little daughter who's three years old there's parts of it where she just yells um, repetitively because she just enjoys that, that part where the violin has that like scream in it and she <laughs> yells with the track. So it's a very, very enjoyable track. It'll get you bouncing and dancing. That is amazing too. And, uh, let's go ahead and uh, play a little bit of that. Here's, here's Naughty right here on the Mike Wagner show. All right.
is fantastic. Wow. Gareth Johnson with Naughty. That is uh, also featured on GarethLive.com. I mean, if we have video, you, you could watch. You could, I can imagine you see me dancing. I was just doing the Michael Jackson to that thing. It was a great song. Love it. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun track. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that is so fantastic. And um, we'll, we'll talk about some of the awards you've won. It sounds like you got some groundbreaking. You traveled and lectured around the world. We'll talk about some of the places you've been to. You listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's one 800 303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and Apple. Also, take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. We're here with uh, pop jazz, hip hop, violinist, virtuoso Gary Gareth Johnson, along with producer Juan Blair, teaming up tonight here on the Mike Wagner Show. We talked about the um, debut CB- CD and um, also having influences, uh, classical, hip hop, and everything else. We also play a couple of tracks, and you also had won some awards as well too. And you just have accolades, you know, from what I was reading as well, too, won numerous competitions and prizes throughout the U.S. You won the 2002 Junior Winner, 2010 Senior Winner of the International Sphinx Competition, and you also won some other distinguished awards. You can just uh, tell us about that. I mean, yeah, those, I, I love winning those awards. Uh, they're great accolades. You know, you, you practice your whole life to accomplish something, so it makes you feel good that day whenever you win that stuff. But, you know, I don't think, I really don't think that competitions are everything because it's like, who are you competing against really? Uh People, they haven't really dedicated their life. Like, like you had, like, I I don't like to be compared or, or really compared with anyone because I do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And so competition, Competition only means so much to me. I love the the cash prizes, the Sphinx <laughs> cash prize, fifty thousand dollar prize. You know? Wow, fifty thousand! I'm yeah. entering. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, <right. laughs> Show me the money, so, give me the money. I'll play violin for fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, they're not playing around. It's serious stuff. But for me, it's it's like who's really going to promote me? Who's really hearing me here? I want to. I'm trying to get places and I need the right ears to hear me. And they obviously weren't even there either. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to get to the right place at the right time. Uh, That's Juan and I are are trying to do. And I know Juan's on the same page. Juan's done many, many great things. Uh, But at the same time, we need to both kind of strike that with that special, special person out there that'll hear our track. And just know, like, oh, these guys need to go to the next level. They should be making tracks right. for this guy's movie or the next the next Jordan Peele movie or, or help John Williams in the next blah, blah. You know, like, hook right. us up. We're good. We, we make good music. If Especially, we did that in seven days. Imagine if people were to sponsor us and give us a year mm-hmm. what we would come up with, you know? Mm-hmm. We would change change the whole industry we'd change the whole industry (laughs) because of the collaboration we'd be collaborating with rappers and different artists and vocalists we could make the sickest best music on earth it's just been the two of us doing all that Mm -hmm. (laughs) so we just need that chance that opportunity and Things are going to change. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. of course, you know, we encourage you to do so. You guys just have a great thing going. And, uh, Gareth, you played and taught in South Africa, Europe, England, yeah. and the Netherlands. You've been all over the place. And just tell us about those experiences and uh, which one did you like the best? I loved them all, you know. Um, 
I'd have to say, I have to tell the truth about them all, though. I flew into South Africa. I was jet lagged. I didn't even get to see any animals. I didn't know to go to any of the parks. I just played the concert, the Durban Symphony and the Johannesburg Symphony, and then flew back. It was terrible. It was way oh, too far to fly to do that. Wow. That's like an 18 hour flight. So unless you're, right. unless you're going to Africa just to chill. Don't go there for business and then just fly back. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's torturous. <laughs> uh, now, the Netherlands was awesome. That was my trip because um, there's things legal there that I like, that I'm into, and also in California and places that I can do my own thing. Mm-hmm. But also, um, also just the, the people are so welcoming, and classical musicians are like rock stars. Any, it, basically, any musician's like a rock star, but even classical musicians, they respect you to the fullest. They might, you'll be at a restaurant, they'll see that you have a violin, they'll be like, oh, pull it out and play. If you do, you play them a song, you and your whole party's paid for. You really? Do it. Yeah. In like the Netherlands and, and in Vienna and in different places over in Europe, they respect the arts. They respect the artists. I feel like um, I feel like this is going to really blow up there, possibly even first, mm-hmm. before it does so much over here because of how they respect music. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. Uh huh. And, and of course, uh, how about uh, which parts of Europe um, that you actually liked, and also what was like the um, you, you got the most? Um, I'm trying to say this like the best reception in uh, Europe. Which countries? In in Vienna, I'd have to say, and also Amsterdam. They love violin in Amsterdam. Uh, Vienna, I actually won an international competition and a prize there, and I didn't even know that I was going to do that. They uh, a conductor just kind of hooked me up. He was like, come play here this day at this time. And I was going to a competition, and I won. Uh, probably good, because I had no nerves. I just played. <laughs> you know. But Vienna was very receptive. Also, the Italians, I mean, the it, violin is magical in Italy, because um, if you go to uh, Venice... And the, the Grand Square there, I forget what they call it exactly, at Venice, the, there's like a, every other restaurant, they have a violinist there playing. A wow. virtual violinist. So it's so well respected. Again, the violinists are like rock stars. So it's like you made it to the NBA of violin if you're one of those violinists playing at one of those restaurants. Wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's cool. Hey. Uh, the cool. violinists are really good, and You'll just see these violinists playing on the street, just the sweetest melodies and these Italian violins, old Italian violins, new ones. And it's just a whole different culture over there, respected for centuries. Um, I've told Juan before, I played on the old Stradivarius because they hold uh, many of them up at the Henry Ford Museum. Mm -hmm. And those violins, being from the 1700s, I played on one. Uh, specifically a few times called the Russian Stradivarius. Some of these violins have names. It's a $4.7 million violin, but it, they keep it at the Henry Ford Museum. A couple years ago, I went to play the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto on it. These things are special. You can hear the sound of that country in the instrument. You know? Uh, wow, yeah. You hear the, the sound coming from that time especially when you've traveled there and experienced it. It's, it. It all comes together for you. I was I was reading somewhere that you have what was an 1840 violin that was about, yeah, $4.7 million. And, um, no, 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 no. The, or, 1840, the 1840 violin is my violin. Okay. It's I, on Baptiste Villon, <laughs> and that... I mean, it's no walk in the park. It's a quarter million dollar violin. I, I was I was trying to figure out where that came from as well, too. You're owning that as well, too. And um, also, what are some of the other violins you own, like, you know, like some from the 1900s or anything like that? Or, you know, just something special, like for, like, say, for one recording because of a certain sound? I have a few other uh, violins here and there uh, that I got through my time coming up. 
but to be honest with you, I'd never used them for recordings because mm-hmm. a violin that's worth 12,000 here, 20,000 there, that's not going to be able to compare and get the colors and the textures and sounds that your one $250,000 violin is going to be able to get. That's going to be able to do more than all the other violins put together. So basically at this point, I only have my Viome, the 1840 French violin, and my electric violin. Electric violin, interesting. I'd like to hear more of your work as well, too. Just tell us, um, you know, what's upcoming and everything else. We'll get to that in a minute. You also toured Asia, Central America, and, of course, you did China, Hong Kong, El Salvador, Germany, and Austria more. And you can just tell us about some of the places and, um, again, what are some of your favorite places? In China, I love China because... You have to talk about China if you talk about all these places. They, they've they been growing so much since the first time that I was there back in 2000. I think the first time I was there was March 2000. And I saw a lot of country, undeveloped country in China at that time. Although I flew into Hong Kong, went to Shenzhen, Shantou, Nanjing, a lot of the famous cities, uh, Suzhou, where they make all the silk. I was playing concerts at all of these places. Uh, it was very undeveloped. The people didn't even know how to act in the concert halls. The guys would come in spitting on the ground. Spit, spitting. Really? Smoking, yeah, smoking cigarettes in the concert halls. They didn't know how to act. The kids would be running up and down the aisles playing games while the classical music, while the Vivaldi Four Seasons was being played. <laughs> <And> just <laughs> chaos. You know, now since then they've developed so much you wouldn't believe it. It's crazy. Any of those cities that you go back to are fully developed with tall buildings. They all look like New York City. It's crazy. And wow. Also, every kid that you see, if they're not carrying a violin, they're either carrying a violin or that kid plays the piano if they're not carrying a violin. Hmm. So, Vi- violin or piano in China, that is interesting. Yeah, you have to. You have to do it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and of course, um, I was just going to um, get get to uh, something else as well, too, and I'm trying to think. And um, you also played in a number of concert halls uh, throughout the U.S. Like, you know, you mentioned, like, you know, Hartford, Seattle, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, St. Louis, the Boston Pops, and more. What do you consider your most favorite concert hall and why? My favorite concert hall? That's an interesting question. Um you have to give it to Carnegie Hall just because of the hype, you know? Mm-hmm. There's so much hype with Carnegie Hall. And I played there maybe seven, eight times, which that's not a lot. Because uh, some people have played there 30, 40, 100 times. Even. But I've played there seven, eight times. So each concert's been very, very special for me. And I've also played as a soloist on the big stage, which is the Stern Auditorium. Uh, and I've played my own solos, uh, solo recitals in uh, the Wild Concert Hall, I believe it's called. Uh, so I've, I've had a lot of great experiences in Carnegie Hall. It's not just like, a, oh, I got to join my high school orchestra and play in Carnegie. No, I was really supposed to be playing in Carnegie Hall. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I meet these kids all the time. Oh, my high school choir went and sang in Carnegie Hall then you hear them sing and they can't sing happy birthday (laughs) (laughs) I I was there based off winning competitions being invited Uh, one night when I played the solo in Wild Concert Hall which is a smaller hall I'm always one I was wondering the whole time I wonder why they have me in the smaller hall that night what is going on I was a little upset and I went in, I walked into the larger hall. You'd never guess who was there. Yo-Yo Ma. Yo-Yo Ma. I was just going to bring up that name, Yo-Yo Ma. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so, Yo-Yo Ma was playing in there. So it's like, okay, okay, I see why you got the big hall. Ah, <laughs> you know what? You you should have invited me one day if you're going to play hip-hop and say, Yo-Yo Ma, come over here. Yo, <laughs> Yo-Yo Ma. <laughs> I wish. Oh. I took him to tiramisu and he he ate that and he loved it. <laughs> oh 
my goodness. <laughs> you guys have to come out and uh, play for us one day, too, and um, we'll get people to love you, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Okay. All right. We're, yeah. we're, we're here with a uh, virtual show violinist, uh, pop jazz, hip hop, uh, Gareth Johnson and producer extraordinaire, Juan Blair. And, uh, what do you guys consider your most memorable moment? Juan, you want to? Memorable moment. Um, yes. well, really our first song, um, call her name. Yeah. Is one of my most memorable moments because, he originally, he sent his original idea back to me. I sent him the track. He sent like a scratch performance and I immediately loved what he did. And, and then he flew up, you know, that's what we worked on first. Um, and I mean, that's, that's my, I think that's my favorite song on the project, but, um, yeah, and probably mine too. It's really meaningful for me that, that, that whole process that of us collaborating on that song. I mean, you know, I, I couldn't have asked for anything better to be put on my music. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that one. That is, it's very similar for me, kind of, because it, it's our track, Magic, which is the first track on our CD Evolution, Magic. Uh, Juan played me this, I think they call it trap music beat, trap beat. And I heard it. I had never heard music like that before in my life. But I just immediately said, oh, I got something that goes over that. I, I, I heard the whole song as soon as he played the beat, which usually I'm thinking of a line and I'll kind of I'll write down the line or I'll record the line. And then I'll think of the next line, I'll record the next line, think of the next idea, or I'll just improvise the whole song and Juan will put together the best thoughts. <laughs> usually that's the strategy. But with magic, I heard the whole song right. It's just there. It was just there. Uh, And so I was able to, I just wrote it down real quick and then I just read it from the music and played it. So it worked really well with some of the tracks really are like just magical. It's almost like meant to be. And magic was kind of that track for me where I heard it and the whole song was there. Also with, and it also happened with a song called Midnight. It, it happens every now and then. You hear the beat yeah. and the whole song's already, it's like you've heard it in a past life and you just write the it song. Went. It's like a blessing. That, mm-hmm. that is amazing having the most memorable moment as well, too. And of course, you know, just another, um, you know, question that just popped up to mind. If you guys were to assemble, a band, like an ideal band to play some music, and who would you have to play at a certain instrument, and why? I'd have the Gareth Johnson band that Juan assembled in San Francisco Bay Area. Every one of those musicians is just sickening amazing. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we, we put the band together uh, you know, last few months, and we've done one performance so far, and um, the guys that I compiled... Uh, because we we're not exactly one thing. Like I, I will often do funk, you know, bands that are strong and funk. But this one, you know, I got a guitar who's more on the rock side. The bass player is more of like a uh, prog bass player. Uh, I got my guy, uh, Steve Angelo Dominguez, who I call him the fatness. Um, you know, we, we it's I, I put together musicians that can kind of stretch a wider range of, of sound, you know, styles. And um, and it's a little bit experimental, but I, I feel like the unit we have can, can really expand and really give uh, Gareth a canvas to really do his thing and, and expand, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing I love about Gareth and, and, and working with him in the studio, one of my favorite moments, is with the question you asked earlier too, is, is the fact that like, we'll, we'll, that be doing some stuff, we'll work some parts out, we'll lay some things down, and then at the end of the session, we're playing it back, and then Gareth will, sit, will look at me like, you know I wasn't supposed to be, it. I'm not supposed to be doing that, right? Like, doing what? That stuff, on this song, right? Yeah, violinists don't do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, this, this, we're breaking the rules right now. You know? Because yeah. I know sometimes classical um, can be very... Um, you know, not that you don't break the rules. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a certain structure 
in cla- in the classical genre, and Gareth is willing to break the structure, you know. Um, and and I know a little bit about a lot of instruments, but I'm not a master of a bunch. Of, I'm not a, a master of the violin, so I know just enough to not know when I'm breaking the rules. And, so, and Gareth just rolls with it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. That is something. Yes, rules are meant to be broken. I mean, there's no ifs, right. ands, or buts about it. So. <laughs> Absolutely. That is fantastic. And, of course, another question out there popped up as well, too. Any plans for an upcoming tour? I think Dwayne's working on that and possibly mm-hmm. with some other big artists. Uh, I think with Maria Antoinette, a uh, uh, kind of pop harpist. Who's yeah. also really, really gaining a lot of recognition in the pop music world, but being an instrumentalist, such as a harpist, is quite unique as well. Mm-hmm. So that'll, right. be, that'll be cool. And she's played for uh, the Obamas. She works with Stevie Wonder, I think, quite a bit. And she's yeah. possibly going to get us in the right doors a little bit more, from what I've been told. So. That we're, might we're working cool. on some collaborations as far as productions as well. A couple songs, yeah. you know, with her and Gareth. So that's kind oh. of our next move with the the tour possibility. So we'll be on her tour. Her tour. Okay, that's great. Fantastic. And uh, do us a favor, keep us up to date. We're looking forward to seeing you guys on tour. And a couple more minutes here. You guys have been fantastic. Love to have you back on soon. Who do you consider biggest influences yeah. in your careers? Well, overall, I mean, my mom took me from nothing to where I am. My mom and dad, of course. But uh, as far as being a musician, it's Michael Jackson for me. Yeah, Prince Prince, probably for me. I mean, Mike as well. Yeah. And um, then on the classical side, it's Paganini on the violin. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and as far as, like, composing, like, for me, like, Hans Hans Zimmer, you know, Score composer. Mm-hmm. Um, Hans is incredible. On that side, and of course, like uh, Quincy Jones. Oh, Quincy you know. Jones is amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jam and Lewis, you know, which just came from the, the time the Princess Camp, you know, their production where they produce all kinds of acts. They didn't, you know, they're very R&B, punk oriented, but they would produce pop groups and groups that were not punk. You know, like an R&B. So I kind of pattern myself after these kind of guys. Okay. That's fantastic yeah. as well, too. And uh, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Well, I mean, I I really have some strong opinions there because people are always trying to tell you what to do and what you should be doing, but at the same time, they want you to work for somebody else. And I'm just, I'm really not for that ever. So I'd rather just keep growing our own brand and keep growing with our company, uh, with the Gareth Johnson band and the Gareth Johnson name. And um, I'd, I'd rather always do my own thing than go work under someone else. So you're just not, you're not going to see me doing that so easily. Like, <laughs> uh, hey, just going to work for this symphony orchestra or just going to work at this school, this university. And I've, I've done all of that. I've gotten paid by all the major symphony orchestras down here. I'll always be a soloist with them and work out my own private contracts with any of these things. Mm-hmm. But you're not going to see me with a boss over me because th- that, that just starts to water down what, what you're getting. I even heard the other day, like, if Drake wouldn't have signed with whoever he signed with, he'd be a billionaire at this point. Hmm. He just kept saying. But you get into these situations, and people start to just take away from the overall number of what you can get. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we're looking to do that. I think we're looking to, to keep our own company and keep just growing our brand. That is amazing, That's too. Right. And, um, and, and why? Yeah. what's the best advice you can give? Well, if you're an instrumentalist or whatever you do, whether you rap, produce, play instrument, keep building, working on your craft, you know, put your time in, time in, 
keep developing your craft. And I think the other thing is um, networking. You got to get out there and you got to meet the people. You got to go wherever the people are that can make a difference in your career. You have to go be with them. You got to go, you know, whether it's music conferences or, or you know, go to, to the clubs. If the people are there that's going to be at the club to help you get the next step, you got to, if you stay in your bedroom, no one will ever find you, you know? And, you know, you may have to, I agree with Garrett, you know, that you want to be building yourself to be your own boss and, and fellow, but at the same time, you may need to work for somebody to get your feet wet or to learn what you need to learn. You know, as long as you're smart and continue to learn the business and don't take bad deals and things like that, sometimes you got to walk, crawl before you walk. But my my main thing would be promote yourself. Be be out there and networking because it's who you know and who knows you. Well, the right person will, will make you jump a step. Maybe jump and save you five years off your career, you know? Mm-hmm. But you'll never find those people if you if you stay indoors, if you don't get out, you know? That if, is- you're, if you're an introvert, you need to find somebody who's an extrovert that will work with you. Right. That is fantastic. That's Were you going to say something I, else, or? Well, that's pretty much. I, I was going to say Dwayne. Dwayne is our extrovert. You know? Exactly. Dwayne, you know, because I, I, I speak from experiences because I'm pretty much an introvert that has had to learn to get out, to, 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 to meet people, to speak, to be in the public. And Dwayne, it helps the both of us. Dwayne kicks us both on the butt. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. to go. We need to go. You know. <laughs> you and us need to get up. Let's go. That's Dwayne. <laughs> right. That, that, so, so, that sounds like it, and it's amazing, too. I wish uh, somebody could do that for me. I'm kidding here. <laughs> hey, guys, just want to say thank you very much uh, for your time. You guys have been fat- fantastic. Once again, violinist, pop jazz, hip-hop, virtuoso Garrett Johnson, and producer, partner extraordinaire, Juan Blair on the Mike Wagner Show. Thank you very much for your time. And before we go, just once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, your website, how do people contact you, and where can people find your music? Well, my website is garethlive.com. A good way to contact me is Instagram, and that's gareth, G-A-R-E-T-H underscore live. And you can find our CD Evolution if you look up Gareth Johnson Evolution on any platform. Mm -hmm. It's G-A-R-E-T-H, J-O-H-N-S-O-N. The album is Evolution. Evolution. And Juan, where can uh, where can they find your works in your website? Well, you can um, find me on Facebook slash Ugly Fingers, U-G-L-Y-F-I-N-G-E-R-S. You know, the Juan Ugly Fingers Blair, but Facebook slash Ugly Fingers. And then on Instagram, it's uh, Ugly Fingers underscore the underscore mix underscore engineer, I believe. The mix engineer, the ugly fingers, the mix engineer on that's Instagram. Okay, great. All right, guys, Gareth Juan, just want to say a big thank you for your time. Once again, been fantastic. Looking forward to having you on again soon, both of you. And do us a favor, keep this update. We'd love to have you back on. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you so much. Appreciate you very much. Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundClub, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. Also, become a sponsor of the program and or donate today at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of the Mike Wagner Show.